Okay, moving on with uh, Rick. Thank you, Brett. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today on the, uh, for the virtual office hours. Today, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the Blackboard groups and how to set up a group in Blackboard. <coughs> uh, so if you didn't know in Blackboard, you can create formal groups of students to collaborate on work and create these groups one at a time or in sets. So where do you find your groups? Under the control panel. Uh, you would go um, from the control panel, you would go to where it says users and groups and just click on the users. This will bring you to the groups page and as you can see this one is empty but uh, this is what you will see if you don't have anything. Three forms of creating groups. You have uh, the manual enrollment, the random enrollment and self enroll. Uh, we're going to talk about that as I explain how to set them up. So what's the manual enroll? The manual enroll allows you to assign each student in your course uh, to a group. The manual enrollment is available for both single groups and group sets. Random enroll. So this is only available for group sets. It automatically distributes the memberships into groups based on a designated number of students per group or the designated number of groups. The random distribution applies only to students who are currently enrolled in your course. You can enroll additional students manually. And we have the self-enroll. Uh, it allows students to add themselves to a group using a sign-up sheet. Self-enrollment is an option available for both single groups and group sets. Important to remember, the students cannot unenroll themselves from the groups. All right, so let's create a single group. So this is where you would uh, you would go. You would create on on you would click create and then click uh, either self enroll or manual enroll. So we're gonna go through the steps on what happens when you either click on self enroll or manual enroll. Uh, so here is an example when you create a self enrollment group. Uh, this is basically what you will see, you make the group visible to the students and this is what characterizes uh, the self enroll is that you have this option, sign up sheet only. If you, create, if you click on the manual enroll group, you would not have the option of uh, sign up. Then the next uh, part, it's going to be the same for every single uh, option that you select. You have the tool availability. And this will give you an idea of what tools are going to be available for the groups. So you can have a blog for the group, a collaboration for the group, discussion board, email, file exchange, journals, tasks, wikis, etc., etc. So those are the tools available for the group. Uh, the single self enroll group, you have to put your name. And uh, here you have to put how many members maximum you will have for that group. So after you select the single manual enroll group, you have option number five here, which is membership. So when you click on add users, you will have a list of students in the course that you want that you can add to to the group itself. Okay, now that we have seen the single groups, we're going to look at the create a group set. And when you go to create, here on the right are the different options for a group set. So if you select a random enrollment group set, uh, this is pretty much like a, um, a manual enroll. This is the, the screen, you just put the name of the group. Uh, if you cr if you click on self enrollment group set, uh, here again you put the name, and this is where you see the difference where you have a sign up sheet only, and the manual enroll is the same thing. You just put the name, and it's pretty much the same thing as the uh, self enroll. I'm sorry, the random enroll group set. Then uh, tool availability, it's the same thing again as uh, in uh, the single group. You have the list of the tools here. 
that you can make available for the group set. And then for the random animal group, this is the differences. Uh, in number five, you have memberships. So here you can select the number of students per group or the number of groups. So let's say you have 15 students and you said, I want five students per group here. So you'll have basically three groups of five students. Or you can select, I want uh, five groups, for example, and then you will have three students per group. And here you can determine how to enroll any remaining members. For example, if you have 18 students and you say that you want to have three groups, you're going to have three students per group. And uh, I'm sorry, if you have three groups and you want you have 18 students, you'll have uh, three, six students per group, depending on how you want to set it up. For example, you can distribute the remaining members among the group put the remaining members in their own group or add, manually add the remaining members to the group. Now this is for the self enrolled group set. The maximum number of members here, uh, of course you have to, uh, in the sign up sheet options, put a name. And if you want to put a description here for the students to be in the form of what is required, you can put it over here. Then the maximum amount a members for the group and how many groups you want because this is a group set. So you have to set up how many groups are you going to be creating. Once you uh, uh, go to the manual enrollment group set, you, you have this option. Uh, when you create a manual group set, you, you have the, the option to enter the number of groups here. And then you will have to click Submit. Once you click Submit, you will have this option that come up. And uh, this will allow you to add the members to the group set. So you have, for example, group set one, group set two. And you will have the option by add to add users over here. So once you click Users, you'll have a list of the students in the course. And you can add them to that group set. Um, now that we have created the group set, you, you will have them all in the, the users uh, and groups. And then you click on the group link. But now you, would, you want to make this available to the students. There's two ways for you to make it available to the students. The first one would be to add a group link to the course menu. So basically, uh, come to the plus here in the top left corner and select tool link. This will give you the tool link window where you will be putting the name of the group. And here you have to select the type. And this, of course, will be groups. Once you click Submit, now it will be available on your course menu. The second option that you have is to add a group link in a course area. So you can go to any of your content areas, course documents, assignments, or you can create a specific uh, course uh, um, content area in the course called groups, for example. And from that content area, you would go to the tools menu and select groups. You would have a menu on uh, what group you want to, to select. You select that group and submit. And now the group will appear in the content area. And when the students come in and they click on, on the, the link to that group, they will see a list of the members and the options of tools that they have available for them to use within that group. Common users for groups. You can use that if you want to create a group for discussion boards and only the members of that group would have access to it. If you want to use a chat or the vertical classroom features you know, that we have in Blackboard. Uh, you also have the file exchange. The file exchange is kind of a a place where students can upload documents and share uh, the documents among themselves in the group. If you want uh, group emails, uh, blogs for groups, journals and wikis, or group assignments. Any question at this time? <laughs>